Peter's gonna fix it. Oh, he's gonna replace it. Two doors are all the way. Well, another day in the boatyard. We've got that uh, gooseneck removed, and uh, now I, what I want to do is make sure that when I cut the gooseneck down, that it's going to still fit the profile of the mast. So I got to do a bit of calculating there. The other thing I'd like to do is you see where I've got all these lines and all this mess sort of attached to the mast, including the furler. I'd like to remove that. So I'm just left with the mast extrusion itself, and then we can clean that and buff it out so it's nice and clean again. Anyway, a good way to inspect your rig is to just kind of take it all apart, see if it's all there, and see if it's all in good condition. So, here we go.
Okay, I got the halyards and all the stays all wrapped up on the far end there, so we're all ready for cleaning. As soon as we have a warm day here, we'll compound the mast and give it a good coat of wax. It's going to look brand new when it's done. It's a really good nick. Now let's have a look at that furler. Furler on Windover appeared to be in good condition. It just didn't work very well. A furler is supposed to make reefing and storing a head sail easy, but this one did neither. Judging by the amount of topsoil that fell out of it, I'm sure this furler hasn't seen much service. It had obviously served the past owner well because it had been on the boat for 30 years. I hope by taking it apart I could discover what was causing the problem and give it a good cleaning. the worst of it apart as you can see I've got all the pieces here so I'll take those home and clean them up but uh, as always there's one screw that's being a little bit difficult I'm gonna put some WD-40 on that and let it sit overnight we'll come back tomorrow and have a look at it again looks good though eh so I've um I've disassembled the uh, furler, as you all know, and uh, I did find there was a lot of dirt inside the components of it. There was nothing broken, although this part, you probably can't see it, but there's some sort of hairline little cracks that have started here. So I'm going to clean this one and uh, I'm going to put some crazy glue on it. It is plastic, so that should bond it. but. Um, I'm trying to degrease the whole thing and then we're going to take the stainless components like we've done with others on the boat and we'll, uh, we'll polish them out so they're nice and shiny again and also straighten them out because over the years they've gotten knocked and what have you. This fair lead has caused a problem and I think it sits like this and the line comes in this direction I think the line has been binding here. And that's why we've had the, a bit of binding with our furling system. So even though this thing is old, uh, really, there's nothing wrong with it. And it was good at one point. And so my theory is that if it was good at one time and nothing major is broken in it, then why not fix it rather than throw it all away? So extrusions are good. The body of the furler is good. There's a little bit of damage to it, but hardly anything. And uh, so I'm going to paint up the body of it. The, the drum portion is black plastic, so it doesn't need to be colored. It's going to look like new. As I've uh, recommended in the past, I've got a bag, which I've carefully labeled, CDI 4-6. That's the uh, model number of the furler. These are all the uh, assorted parts, and I did have most of this in the bag as well. Basically, what I wanted to mention was that uh, in some cases, you're going to find that the older stuff on your boat is built better than the new stuff that you're able to buy. And in the past, we've always looked very carefully at items that we're uh, working on in boats to see if they're salvageable or not. And in most cases, we find they are. Now, electronics would be an exception to that. Uh, things like line sometimes uh, can be uh, salvaged, but for the most part, it's a consumable item. You want to look over your boat and see what you can salvage if you're on a budget like we are. Uh, this furler is actually was at one time a fairly good item. And you can see by the construction of it, I mean, this is cast aluminum. It's, it's really solid and substantial. And I think CDI did their homework when they built it. I've taken this apart and other than one little, one little corner that's bent, I can show that to you right here. Just one little corner there that's bent, and I could probably heat that up and push it back together, but 
I may damage it more than it's damaged now and it still works. Uh, these are the, the rims that go, you see they go around it like so. I've taken it all apart, I've cleaned it really well. I'm going to replace any fasteners that are damaged. One of them I had to cut out. So uh, I replaced those and also the, the little fingers that keep the line in. If you look very carefully here you can see how every one of them has been bent. And this happens, I mean over time. Every one of them has been bent here. So I'm going to take these fingers to the shop and we're going to straighten them out and we're going to polish them on the polishing wheel and then reassemble the whole thing again with uh, beautiful new components. There are components like this as well that uh, need to be polished and there's a little bit of stainless right in here in this casting. So all those things I'll focus on now while I've got time, I mean I can't be painting the boat yet. So um, while I have time, we're going to polish this all up, reassemble it again and uh, hopefully we'll have a brand new furler. I got a bunch of that uh, water line taken off. You can see here that uh, we're down to the uh, the gel coat. I think it's gel coat. A um, couple of things that we've learned here today. One is that uh, I know this is single part paint. It's an Interlux uh, single part uh, paint, and uh, I'm pretty sure that this is two part paint. And I'm pretty sure that this is two-part paint. So, in scraping it, I've discovered that this is quite durable. Now, this is very durable. So it could be that this was a better quality single part. And it could be that this is two-part. Now, we're still going to do a test using some acetone on this. Or paint thinner. I haven't uh, quite discerned that yet. But uh, apparently when you lay the thinners on top of here, on a rag, a soaked rag, and you leave it for a while, single part will bubble up, but the two part won't. So uh, we're going to test that and just make double sure that we've got two part paint here so we don't have to strip any of this off before we start putting the two part on. You can't put two part over single part. So this is what it's looking like all the way around now. I've got a little bit left to do where this tarp is here, but uh, we got snow in the forecast, so we'll wait till. You see I've got it's sort of falling to pieces now, but anyway, at least it's protecting the boat a little bit. So we'll get that last little bit. It's only about an hour's work to get that done, but basically the boat is, is all finished up. It's a windy, gusty, rainy day today, but at least it's not snow. That's where we're at. them on the polishing wheel and then reassemble the whole thing again with uh, 
beautiful new components. So, and uh, Debbie's right here to confirm that. Yes, I am. Talk to me.